Hey, it's Dry Bear. Yesterday, we got to see all of the awesome updates for Final Fantasy XIV, and I touched on a topic that I said I would get to later, so today is the day. And that is the idea that Final Fantasy XIV as an MMORPG has been getting progressively easier and easier over time. But there's actually a lot more to that concept and that discussion that we need to dive into. And I know there's going to be a lot of different opinions on this subject, so drop yours down below. Now let's start with a PAX East quote from Yoshi P, the director of Final Fantasy XIV himself, who has been part of developing Final Fantasy XIV from its failed outsourcing launch all the way up till now when we're getting into its major expansion coming out in two months. And he acknowledges that I regret as we've continued to operate Final Fantasy XIV, we've made the game more comfortable a game you can play without stress, but looking back on the last 10 years, I'm thinking we've overdone that a bit. And there's a bunch of different angles you can come at this from, and some of it really just should be thought of from the developer's perspective on having as many active subscriptions as possible so that they can pay their bills, keep the lights on, and keep all their employees paid so that they can feed their families. It also means there's not any one right choice because sometimes the game that the developers want to make is the game that they should go for, as there's going to be pros and cons on either side. But let's start by highlighting the changes that have happened over the last five years or so that have really started to move final Final Fantasy XIV from that mixed MMO to more of the casual MMO that it is today. Even just yesterday with the showcase we saw on the Dawn Trail job actions reveal, we have things like Dark Knight losing two abilities and having them merge into one with Blood Weapon and Delirium. Seeing Squeenix state specifically that they wanted Viper to be a low input, low button count focused job. And they even talked about globally how they want all of the characters in the game to be having about as much as they do now for action button bloat or even less. Things like losing directional attacks for most of the melee classes over the course of the last three or four years. And most especially my favorite job in Final Fantasy XIV in the early days was Summoner. And over the last couple of years, it has been getting easier and easier, simpler and simpler. And I think this is due to what I'm gonna call the Ratatosker effect. See, for a time I worked on a game called Smite and one of the characters that I was helping create was Ratatosker, which was the squirrel that goes up and down the world tree in Norse mythology. And all the developers working on Ranatosker ended up making him absolutely positively adorable. The whole art team, everyone involved in that was just making this character so adorable. You want to squish his cheeks and rub his fur. But the gameplay for Ranatosker was quite complex and incredibly challenging because you had so many different choices and play styles to learn and implement during the match that it ended up becoming a high difficulty, high requirement character to play for that most people that wanted to play Ratatosker couldn't because he was too hard, which resulted in a very odd situation for this character in that it was a highly loved, highly popular character that a lot of people were interested in, but had a very low play rate. People didn't pick him all that much. And I have a sneaking suspicion that this is what happened with Summoner in Final Fantasy XIV and that everyone really knows Summoners in the Final Fantasy universe. Ever since Yuna in 2001 for Final Fantasy X showed off how cool summoners can be, I think there's just been a mad fandom for that kind of job in the Final Fantasy IP. However, the old summoner gameplay was incredibly challenging to do properly. All of your summons kind of coexisted and you needed to swap to a specific summon to use a specific ability in a specific situation. You would go to your wind elemental to do AOE, you would go to your fire elemental for burst damage, you would use your earth elemental to give yourself a shield for raid mechanics. And not only that, but the two minute timer of you going through your whole process of summoning Bahamut, getting that damage out, and even during your Bahamut phase, your spells were all casted so you had to stand still and cast like a black mage there was so much going on around managing your dots and having all your bio mechanisms working properly that it became incredibly difficult for anyone to reasonably play summoner to a high level and what happened to Ratatosker tosker was he got reworked to be a little bit more friendly for people that like that kind of art style and summoner got the same effect and i really haven't had much interest in summoner ever since in fact there was a study group a uh focus 
focus group for players in China that were introduced to Final Fantasy XIV for the first time, and they were asked to rate all of the jobs in the game, and they rated Summoner as being the easiest job in the entire game. After the rework, of course, this was Shadowbringers. In fact, the rough translation of the feedback they gave for Summoner was that you can play this job as long as you have hands, but even in today's world with accessibility, as long as you have some muscle that you can move in your face, arm, chest, or anything, you can play the job Summoner, because most of it just relies on pressing shiny buttons. And in the live letter yesterday, they were touting by how many job specific abilities, rotations, and sequences they've been able to condense into a single button. So you just press the same button and it'll dynamically update to the next ability in the sequence. So you don't really have that many buttons on your bar. And there's another factor we're not considering here. And that is the idea that Final Fantasy XIV, unlike most MMOs on the market today, is also available on console, which means the game must support full controller functionality. And it doesn't matter how clever you get with combined button uses or pop-up menus or D-pad interactions, no matter what, there's gonna be less button availability on console than there is on PC where you have a keyboard that you can map and macro infinitely. To make matters worse, as far as MMOs go on the market today for PvE content, PvP content, I would say that Final Fantasy XIV is probably the one that has the least amount of punishment for failure when you are making mistakes during the encounter. Aside from maybe Guild Wars 2 with the down system, but the idea that you have infinite and replenishable battle reses for your character in Final Fantasy XIV makes a very big difference versus games like Lost Ark or World of Warcraft where battle reses are limited or in the first mention knows no battle res at all. If you die, you're dead, and the counter needs to be restarted if you fail at all. Now, Squeenix has mentioned that they do want to look at battle reses for DPS jobs specifically, so like Red Mage and Summoner being able to battle res in the middle of a match, which means the, the healers don't even need to worry about using limit breaks to resurrect dead teammates or even use mana on that to get people back into the fight because there's always a Red Mage or a Summoner nearby that can get them back into the fight without them having to worry about it. And some of this goes along the lines of Yoshi P acknowledging that the game has become a little bit too comfortable over the years, and he may want to look to add more difficulty into the game. However, that doesn't mean that Final Fantasy is completely devoid of challenge. So next, let's talk about the area of Final Fantasy XIV that I would say is the only existing area in Final Fantasy XIV where significant challenge exists, and the paradigm of whether this should be what MMOs offer in the future, and that is Savage Raids. In fact, I can honestly say that anywhere outside of Savage Raids, I have never really felt tension or challenge or hitting a brick wall in Final Fantasy XIV, at least since launch of the game, except in Savage Raids, where there is a significant requirement for every every player to do their utmost to achieve the final result of clearing the encounter that they're facing. And now we're specifically talking about PvE encounters and the challenges that they present. And I think all MMOs, as far as PvE, like raids and dungeons go, sit on a very wide spectrum that goes from the far left side, which we're going to call adaptation. And I think the best representation of this is going to be Lost Ark. And the far right side, I'm going to place Final Fantasy XIV, and this is going to be more around precision. See, Final Fantasy XIV mechanics are very strict in Savage. Compared to most MMOs on the market, the amount of forgiveness on the mechanics themselves, aside from the player forgiveness on their positioning and how they react to each other, it is more of a intricate dance on where you stand, when you move, what you absorb. You have to be very precise in how you execute the dealings that you're engaging with. And because the precision is so high in Final Fantasy XIV, that means that the randomness has been basically removed. In fact, to the point where when you know a fight in Final Fantasy XIV, you can almost do it with your eyes closed because it plays out almost exactly the same way every single time. Which in and of itself is incredibly challenging for the first encounter when you're actually clearing or progressing that content and you haven't gotten the dance steps just right yet, you're going to fail a lot and you're going to feel that difficulty in Savage Raids because you just haven't been moving your feet and doing the actions in just the right way. However, once you master the content, I can see how people start to say that Final Fantasy content gets incredibly boring. Even Yoshi P has gone on record saying that when he does encounters for the 10th time, he starts to feel sleepy because this is what's happening with the game design of the encounters you're in. 
without randomness, without random procs, without th things coming up on the fly and forcing you to adapt during the encounter, it's going to be difficult at first and get easier and easier as you clear it. Which further solidifies Final Fantasy XIV as a very casual, comfortable MMO because the hardest part is just learning. Once you learn, there's not really a whole lot of execution that's required from you. Once you have the muscle memory down, you just got to do it the same way every time and collect the rewards if you haven't gotten them yet. But on the other end of the spectrum is add adaptation, and I would say that Lost Ark is the antithesis, polar opposite of Final Fantasy XIV, and that no encounter in, in Lost Ark for the raids or PvE is ever the same as any other, and that's because the bosses that you fight are completely random. They will move in random directions, their patterns are completely randomized, the way they faced, who they attack, their aggro is random, you can't even pull aggro or tank in Lost Ark, the boss will just constantly randomly change from one target to another, so you never know who he's going to be targeted, when they're going to use moves, or what's going to happen. And because of that, you don't really need as much precision in Lost Ark as you do adaptation. You need to be able to read movement patterns and action patterns and constantly on the fly make adjustments to what's happening in front of you, because if you don't adapt properly, you're just going to be a stick in the mud. And that leads to a much better experience over the long term. That's why people can do the same boss over and over and over for 18 months months straight in Lost Ark, but once they clear Savage in Final Fantasy XIV, they kind of wind off and stop playing because they've kind of mastered that, but mastery in Lost Ark requires a lot of time and effort to create that kind of internal knowledge to know when you can adapt and how you should adapt in a million different random situations. So which side is better? Should you be more on the adaptation side or more on the precision side? Which one's more challenging and why? Now let's circle back to the beginning of the video when I talked about subjectivity in difficulty, how the fact that difficulty can be entirely subjective from person to person. You may be someone who is very good at adapting to situations, which means that playing those kind of counters where there's randomness all the time, you have roll the bones on your outlaw rogue, or you have random cards on your astrologian, or you have random encounters in your boss fight, and you're perfectly fine with that, which means that the harder encounter for you, at least at first, is going to be the Final Fantasy XIV Savage Raid, where you have to do everything perfectly, which means that margin for error is so razor thin that if you do anything slightly out of step, you're going to have a big negative impact for it, but your ability to adapt to the situation isn't really as necessary or as needed. And the reverse is also true. You might be someone who is very good at executing everything on the sheet as required. Your step-by-step -step instructions, you can follow those to the T and you're very good at it, which means that savage raids for you in Final Fantasy are incredibly easy, but when the boss keeps turning around and jumping in random directions when you're trying to cast a meteor in a game like Lost Ark is incredibly hard for you because things don't seem to stick and stay in place. And I think there needs to be a large set of offerings on the market for people that want different things. I would say that in between those two spectrum ends, you're going to find games like Black Desert Online or Guild Wars 2 or Elder Scrolls Online, Swator, World of Warcraft, or even the encounters in New World fall on that spectrum between precision and adaptation. And it's up to the developer to decide what end of the spectrum they want to be in and what their ultimate experience is going to be for the users. The great part about having a casual, comfortable, welcoming MMO like Final Fantasy XIV is really anybody can play it. And there isn't really enough of a barrier, I would say, to Savage because it's so scripted and step-by-step -step that if you put in the time to learn each Savage encounter, there aren't that many released at once, like three or four gates that you can clear. As long as you put in the time to learn it and get everything just right, anyone of any skill level can get to the point where they can clear Savage Raids. And that's kind of what I think they're going for is they want everyone to be able to jump into Final Fantasy, have a good time, feel comfortable, get on their console, sit on their couch and play and enjoy themselves and get all the rewards that are available and all the kinds of content that are there. Whereas games like Lost Ark or even Black Desert Online are games that are a little bit more pay to win, which means they want to encourage people to be able to buy gear and buy bonuses and buy strength so they can get better and better and better to overcome the insane challenges they're facing in the encounters that they have. And there's a social aspect that goes into this in as well. Final Fantasy XIV is a game where you can queue up for something you've never done before and pretty much get through it no matter what without much stress or pain. You're gonna have to learn along the way, but you can definitely do that. Whereas games like Lost Ark, if you were to queue up for something that you haven't
haven't done before and don't know about, you're going to fail miserably and probably get completely toxically kicked out of the group and probably have a bad experience in general. And that's because the higher the requirement at first is going to be for players, the higher the incentive is going to be for gatekeeping. Gatekeeping exists in Lost Ark to a level that I haven't seen in any online game anywhere else on the internet in the many, many decades that I've been playing video games. It is easily the highest level of gatekeeping and dismissiveness and controlling of what players get into what groups and when, and some of it doesn't even make sense. It's absolutely horrendously gatekept to an insane degree. And Final Fantasy XIV is the complete opposite. In fact, it doesn't really matter how well you perform in a general group in Final Fantasy XIV. You can kind of queue up and kick rocks and you'll make your way through to the end. People will probably help you or mentor you or for the most part, you'll be able to get through it. It'll just take a little bit longer. Of course, that's not true for Savage Raids as it does require you to be absolutely precise with every step that you take and you do need to learn the strategies. But again, getting through those strategies and getting them done is available, I would say, to most, if not all players that play the game. But let me know where you sit. Do you think there should be a level above Savage for Final Fantasy XIV that's even harder than the content they have now? Or do they have the right approach of making everything accessible, low barrier of entry with a lot of comfortable aspects in gameplay? It's more about choosing your difficulty level if you want something higher. Personally, for me, I think there should be a level above Savage in Final Fantasy XIV, and I would love to see more jobs, at least a handful, that are pretty difficult to master and play. You can even make them obscure if you want, but I don't like the fact that all jobs in Final Fantasy XIV have slowly been rounded off so that they become easier and simpler and simpler so that any job, no matter what you're interested in, if you're joining into Final Fantasy XIV for the first time, you can pretty much play any job pretty easily if you put in the time. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below, leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people, and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.